news tonight. Mud tsunami. Over a hundred people feared missing in Japan in a deadly slide of dirt. Deadly crash. The Philippines fear the worst as a military plane makes a crash landing. Spreading wildfires. Another nation burns with one of Mother Nature's revenge attempts. Celebrating freedom. Pandemic weary Americans celebrate July 4th with a bang. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. Good evening and thank you for joining with us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage from Japan. More than a thousand Japanese rescuers combed through crumbled houses and buried roads after landslides throw through a seaside city, fighting time and poor weather to search for some 80 people believed missing. Sifting through the debris, rescue workers are hoping to find survivors. It came without any warning. A dark wave of mud sweeping up everything in its path, striking the town of Atami, situated to the southwest of Tokyo at around 10.30 in the morning. Homes, cars and electricity cables, all destroyed in its wake. One fireman escaped with only seconds to spare, while this driver only just managed to flee from a second torrent. Dozens of houses have been destroyed, and around 3,000 people are without electricity, while around 20,000 households are under evacuation orders. The disaster came after several days of torrential rainfall. And with the rivers still swollen, experts warn there could be more landslides to come. At least 45 people were killed after a Philippine Air Force plane crashed in the southern Philippines. It is recorded as the Southeast Asian country's worst military air disaster in decades. According to a local military chief, all 96 passengers of the Philippine Air Force plane that crashed on Sunday have now been accounted for. 47 on board were killed and 49 military personnel were injured. The Lockheed C-130 military aircraft overshot the runway after it touched down at Jolo Airport in the southern Sulu province at 11.30 a.m. local time. The burning wreckage of the plane also killed three villagers on the ground and injured four others. Eyewitnesses reported that a number of soldiers were seen jumping out of the aircraft before it hit the ground, avoiding the explosion caused by the crash. Many of those on board had only recently finished basic military training. The combat troops on board were en route to fight against the Abu Sayyaf Filipino Jihadi group in the province of Sulu in a conflict that has been ongoing for decades. The military said there are no signs of an attack on the plane. The Philippine Air Force has a history of disasters as the government struggles to modernize its military. The Philippine Secretary of National Defense Delphine Lorenzana has ordered an investigation into the incident, which will begin after rescue and recovery operations are completed. Over in the Middle East, a huge forest blaze in Cyprus has killed four people, destroyed homes and forced evacuations of villages and Greece, Israel and other countries deployed firefighting aircraft to the Mediterranean island. Four people were found dead on Sunday as a huge fire raged for a second day in Cyprus. Tracks of forest have been razed to the ground and dozens of homes gutted. The blaze, fanned by strong winds, affected at least 10 communities in the foothills of the Trudos mountain range. It's a pine forest with densely vegetated shrubland that covers at least 19 square miles. Cypriot's president, Nikos Anastasiades, called it one of the most destructive fires we have experienced, adding that the state would stand by all those affected. The victims were found dead close to Odu, a mountainous community north of the cities of Limassol and Lanaka. Witnesses say they were found a short distance from a vehicle that appeared to have crashed. Egypt's foreign ministry said it had been informed by Cypriot authorities that the victims were Egyptian. Nations including Greece, Italy and Israel have offered their assistance in fighting the blaze. The cause of the fire, which started around midday on Saturday, remains unclear though police said they were questioning a 67-year-old person in connection with the blaze. Cyprus experiences hot summer months, with temperatures in recent days exceeding 104 Fahrenheit. 
Senior foreign executives of major telecommunications firm in Myanmar have been told by the junta that they must not leave the country without permission. The Myanmar military have banned telecommunications firm executives from leaving the country without permission. The confidential order was introduced in mid-June, said senior executives. Both foreigners and Myanmar nationals must seek authorization if they wish to set foot outside the country. Telecom businesses were also sent a second letter telling them they had until Monday, July 5th to fully implement intercept technology that allows authorities to spy on calls. The spyware also tracks messages and web traffic. Reuters has not seen the orders, but spoke to someone with direct knowledge of the matter. The military did not respond to requests for comment. After seizing power in a coup in February, the military announced their aim to pass a cybersecurity bill. It also amended privacy laws to free security forces to intercept communications. The source said the travel ban on executives was meant to pressure telecoms to finish activating the spyware. Three other telecom sources, also speaking on condition of anonymity, said the authorities had stepped up pressure on the companies to implement the intercept, but declined to elaborate further. Pope Francis was scheduled to undergo intestinal surgery at the sprawling Catholic-run Gemli Hospital. Italian President offered an affectionate thought on behalf of all Italians, adding that he was wishing for a good convalescence and even a speedier recovery for the Pope. Pope Francis was admitted to Rome's Gemelli Hospital for intestinal surgery on Sunday, the first time he has been in the hospital since his election in 2013. The Pope appeared to be in fine health several hours earlier when he addressed thousands of people in St. Peter's Square for his Sunday blessing and announced a trip to Slovakia and Budapest for September. The Vatican said the 84-year-old pontiff was due to undergo the surgery later on Sunday for symptomatic diverticular stenosis of the colon, which tends to affect older people and can cause abdominal pain. Francis suffers from other ailments, including sciatica, Last year, a bad cold kept him from taking part in a week-long retreat with senior aides south of Rome, and in 2014, Francis was forced to cancel several engagements because of what was believed to be a stomach ailment. Going into a short commercial break, we'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back. A controlled explosion brought down the unstable remains of the collapsed apartment block in Florida ahead of a threatening tropical storm as rescuers prepare to resume searching for victims. In an effort to speed up the rescue mission, demolition crews brought down these remains of a damaged condo in South Florida. It's a race to ensure the safety of the ruined building ahead of a tropical storm expected to hit on Tuesday and to gain access to the underground car park where there could still be survivors trapped. After a week and a half of fruitlessly searching, over 100 people are still missing following the collapse of this building. The chances of pulling anyone alive out of the rubble at this stage are increasingly slim. Questions remain over how the building was allowed to fall into such a state of dangerous disrepair, despite repeated warnings of the urgent need for renovations. Protesters took to the streets in Brazil, demanding the impeachment of President Jair Bolsonaro and more vaccines to fight the coronavirus pandemic, as the country faces the world's second deadliest outbreak after the United States. Chance for Bolsonaro to pack up and leave office resounds through the streets of Rio de Janeiro as protesters continue to pressure the government over its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. He knew about the corruption and didn't do anything, so it's just one more reason why we're here today. It's our third day calling for Bolsonaro to quit. It's no longer possible to bear or tolerate the behaviour of the genocidal president who's leading our country. Across the country, from Sao Paulo to Belém, demonstrators are accusing Jair Bolsonaro of failing to denounce a potential case of fraud after prosecutors opened a probe on Friday into the president's conduct. A health ministry official has claimed he faced, quote, excessive force to approve the purchase of three million doses of India's Covaxin vaccine 
at a much higher cost than other jabs. He says he'd warned the president about his suspicions, but the Bolsonaro didn't raise the issue with the federal police. But even if the investigators do find evidence, the Supreme Court can only open a case with Congress's approval, where Bolsonaro holds a majority. An inquiry has already been opened into the government's management of the pandemic, focusing on delays in vaccine supplies and disregards for social distancing. So far, Jai Bolsonaro has refused to take a vaccine, despite contracting the virus last year. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is expected to announce a further relaxation in the coronavirus restrictions in England, despite the Delta variant surge. To give us more updates on this, we have other than a World News Special Correspondent, Dilini Semiratna, joining us now from London in the UK. Dilini? Yes, Shanali. British Prime Minister made this call saying people must learn to live with the virus and exercise judgment as they go, go about their daily lives. Johnson is expected to move ahead with the final stage of the four-step plan out of lockdown and restore people's freedoms when he speaks at a news conference. Step four, which is scheduled to come into effect on 19th of July, will mean the removal of mask-wearing rules, the end of social distancing and the return of large-scale events. The move to relax the rules looks set to go ahead, even though coronavirus cases have risen to their highest level since January. As of 4th of July, more than 78 million doses of the vaccine had been administered across the UK, with 63.4% of adults receiving two doses. The British Medical Association has expressed concern about removing all measures to curb the spread of the virus given the surge in the Delta variant. Recently appointed Health Secretary Sajid Javid is expected to announce the details of the relaxation in Parliament in advance of Johnson's media conference. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Dilini Senvi Ratna reporting from London in the UK. In Australia, the race to obtain COVID-19 vaccine supply has been linked to the Hunger Games as the Australia's rollout continues to lag behind similar nations with just 7.2% of the population fully vaccinated. Let's cross over to other than a World News Special Correspondent Timothy Philip from Melbourne in Australia to give us more details. Timothy. Yes, Shanali. Australia's New South Wales said the next two days would be absolutely critical in deciding whether a two-week anti-coronavirus lockdown in Sydney, set to end on July 9th, will have to be extended amid rising Delta variant cases. With more than 5 million Sydney residents under strict stay-at-home orders, total infections in the latest outbreak have topped 300. New South Wales reported 35 locally acquired cases today, matching the biggest daily rise in infections so far this year, recorded two days ago. Sydney, the worst affected city in the latest flare-up in infections in Australia, is battling to contain the highly infectious Delta variant. Perth, Brisbane and the northern city of Darwin came out of snap lockdowns over the weekend after officials there deemed the Delta strain was under control. The fast-moving Delta strain first detected in India and listed as one of the four variants of principal concern by the World Health Organization has stoked fears of a significant outbreak in Australia amid a sluggish inoculation drive. Less than 10% of Australia's adult population of just over 20.6 million so far have been fully vaccinated, while more than 30% have received at least their first dose. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Timothy Philip reporting from Melbourne in Australia. We have some good news for you. A group of young inventors in Brazil have developed an environmentally friendly 3D printer cast that could end the spell of the cumbersome plastic cast. Since 2015, Brazilian health tech startup Fixit has been developing an alternative product to heel sprained wrists and twisted ankles, a collection of colorful web-like offices made of biodegradable plastic. Fixit distributes a range of 30 products including offices for fingers, wrists and shoulders with the help of 88 licenses across Brazil. Its offices are printed using PLA plastic derived from the pulps of beetroot, sugarcane and corn. Commonly known as a type of bioplastic, PLA plastic can biodegrade it up to nine months unlike traditional plastic casts which are often made from petroleum-based plastics. 
According to local media, more than 1,000 offices have been printed by Fixit for 4,000 patients in total, representing a reduction of 2.5 tons of plaster. The offices can last up for three years and may also be remodeled four times after its initial application. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. India reopened stadiums, adventure sports and eased other localised restrictions after months of lockdown in a gradual reopening after the deadly second wave of coronavirus prompted shutdowns. Thousands of people on the outskirts of Thailand's capital were being evacuated and firefighters battled blazes for hours after a factory explosion that killed one rescue worker and wounded 29 people. Chinese astronauts on a mission to set up the Tianyang space station have completed a successful spacewalk, the second to the country and the first outside the new station. The astronauts on board are one of the first of the four high-stakes missions to complete China's space station by the end of 2022. British Prime Mr. Boris Johnson and German Chancellor Angela Merkel met with COVID-19 travel restrictions high on the agenda as cases of the highly transmissible Delta variant surge in Britain. Tropical storm Elsa battered the Dominican Republic, killing two people after a wall collapsed due to the strong winds. Elsa's center was near eastern Cuba, the U.S. National Hurricane Center said, and heading northwest toward the Florida Straits. One of the largest ransomware attacks in history spread worldwide, forcing the Swedish Coop grocery store chain to close all 800 of its stores because it could not operate its cash registers. This is a reminder of how cyber attacks can affect our everyday lives. Across Sweden, hundreds of stores belonging to the Coop chain forced to close after a ransomware attack left them unable to operate their cash registers. Hackers appear to have targeted a U.S. IT firm called Kaseya with massive knock-on effects for its customers. According to cybersecurity experts, criminals hacked into a specific piece of software used by dozens of businesses. The attack left at least 200 U.S. companies affected. This is only the latest in a series of cyber attacks that have destabilized businesses with the aim of wobbling the U.S. economy. Barely two months ago, supplies of gasoline up and down the U.S. East Coast were disrupted when cyber criminals hacked into Colonial Pipeline. Weeks later, Brazilian meat supplier JBS, which has a large U.S. presence, was also targeted by ransomware. Officials believe that Russia-based hackers are behind some of these attacks. But for now, Joe Biden isn't blaming anyone in particular for this hack. The fact is that uh, a director of the intelligence community you give me a, a deep dive on what's happened and I'll know better uh, tomorrow, and if it is, uh, either with the knowledge of and or a consequence of Russia, then I told Putin we will respond. More and more companies are being forced to pay ransoms as hacks grow even more sophisticated, but sometimes governments can get the upper hand. Washington was able to recover $2.3 million worth of Bitcoin ransom paid to Colonial Pipeline hackers, after investigators tracked and seized the virtual currency on the dark web. And finally tonight, Americans mark their nation's 245th birthday with fireworks that may look brighter, hot dogs that may taste juicier and marching bands that may sound jauntier after the coronavirus pandemic forced the cancellation of nearly all celebrations last year. In New York, the early epicenter of the pandemic, the annual Macy's 4th of July fireworks display returned after being cancelled in 2020. Crowds cheered and the band played patriotic music as fireworks lit up the night sky over a mile-long stretch of the city's East River, separating Manhattan from the boroughs of Queens and Brooklyn. This year's Independence Holiday, following 600,000 U.S. deaths from COVID-19 and amid a rise in the more aggressive Delta variant, was a time for Americans to show their patriotism and celebrate a personal sense of freedom by mingling with friends again and enjoying summer's simple pleasures. President Biden, the First Lady and their guests watched the fireworks from the White House portico balcony shortly after a garden barbecue party below with around 1,000 military families and first responders hosted by Bidens. 
It was the largest White House event since Biden took office in January and was geared towards giving Americans something to celebrate as signs of normalcy have returned following by the coronavirus pandemic. Well, that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.